Hey, what's up, y'all, man? This is your boy, Y'all's Chosen One. I am going to make another video. This time, we're going to do something a little different. Uh, we'll start with the book of Joshua. We're actually on Genesis uh, chapter uh, 17. But we'll start off with uh, Jasher uh, in the book of Jasher chapter uh, 17, okay? Uh, if you remember in the last chapter of Genesis, uh, what we had was a story of... Uh, uh, Sarai and Hagar and the story of the Ishmaelites and how the arrows be, uh, you know, became to be. So now we'll start in, uh, you know, book of Jasher chapter 17. We'll read verse one through 15 and then we'll go to Genesis and, you know, we're just going to divide it up. Okay. Cause it kind of, you know, it has to be done that way. All right. Jasher chapter 17, verse one. And in those days, in the 91st year of the life of Abram, the children of Chittim made war with the children of Tubal. So these are uh, Asiatic. These are Asiatic people uh, fighting each other. You know, Asiatic black people, I would say, because there was no Europe. This is a. Uh, these are Asiatic black people fighting each other. Okay. Uh, the children of Chittim made war with the children of Tubal. For when Yah has scattered the sons of men. Upon the face of the earth, the children of Chittim went and embodied themselves in the plain of Canopia, and they built themselves cities there and dwelt by the river uh, Tibru, which may be the type, uh, I don't know, I don't know if it's the Tigris, but not the Tigris, but um, the, uh, that landmass up there uh, that we know today is Asia, because Europe was thought, if you look at an old uh, map of the geography before Europe got there, that was Asia. Those are these. These are these Asiatic people. Okay, and the children of Tubal dwelt in Tuscana, and their boundaries reached the river Tibru. And the children of Tubal built a city in Tuscanon, uh, and they called the name Sabina after the name of Sabina, son of Tubal, their father. And they dwelt there until this day. And it was at that time the children of Chittim made war with the children of Tubal, and the children of Tubal were smitten before the children of Chittim. And the children of Chittim caused 370 men to fall from the children of Tubal. And at that time the children of Tubal swore to the children of Chittim, saying, You shall not intermarry amongst us, and no man shall give his daughter to any of the sons of Chittim. For all the daughters of Tubal were in those days fair, for no woman were then found in the whole earth so fair as the daughters of Tubal. So these are very, very beautiful women. And uh, I thought I had my thing here. Hold on. All right. So yeah, this is all this is all Asiatic people. Okay. Uh, I think I have some things here. Uh, maybe not. Let's see here. Yeah, it's like up there toward Armenia and stuff like that, man. Chittim. Okay. Well, that's two ball. It's like Armenians uh, up that way. Anyway, they're in uh, the, in the in the age in the uh, continent Asia. So these are black Asian black asiatic peoples fighting against each other okay all right where am i at? okay for all the daughters of tubal were in those days fair for no woman were then found in the whole earth so fair as the daughters of tubal the very very uh very very beautiful women you know and all who delighted in the beauty of women went to the daughters of tubal and took wives from them and the sons of men kings and princes who greatly delighted in the beauty of women took wives in those days from the daughters of Tubal. And at the end of three years, after the children of Tubal had sworn to the children of Chittim not to give them their daughters for wives, about 20 men of the children of Chittim went to take some of the daughters of Tubal, but they found none. For the children of Tubal kept their oaths not to intermarry with them, and they would not break their oaths. And in the days of harvest, the children of Tubal went into their fields to get in their harvest. When the young men of Chittim assembled and went to the city of Sabina, and each man took 
a young woman from the daughters of Tubal, and they came to their cities. And the children of Tubal heard of it, and they went to make war with them, and they could not prevail over them, for the mountain was exceedingly high from them. And when they saw they could not prevail over them, they returned to their land. And at the revolution of the year, the children of Tubal went and hired about 10,000 men from those cities that were near them, and they went to war with the children of Chittim. And the children of Tubal went to war with the children of Chittim to destroy their land and to distress them. And in this engagement, the children of Tubal prevailed over the children of Chittim. And the children of Chittim, seeing that they were greatly distressed, lifted up their lifted up the children which they had had by the daughters of Tubal upon the wall which they had built to be before the eyes of the children of Tubal. How about that? So they was getting spanked. And their last ditch effort, cowardly effort, kind of like the Vietnamese did with the Omega soldiers by putting those, uh, you know, running those kids at them. And the children of T Chittim said to them, have you come to make war with your own sons and daughters? Oh, man. So these people of Chittim were telling these people of Tubal because, you know, the men had pretty much raped uh, these women of Tubal, and now that they had kids, because it was from the egg of these women, then that you're going to kill your own sons and daughters. And have we not been considered your flesh and bones from this that time to now? And when the children of Tubal heard this, they ceased to make war with the children of Chittim, and they went away. And they returned to their cities, and the children of Chittim at that time assembled and built two cities by the sea. And they called one Purtu and the other Ereza. And Abram, the son of Terah, was then 99 years old. <clears throat> At that time, Yah appeared to him and he said to him, I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will greatly multiply thy seed. And this is the covenant which I make between me and thee, that every male child be circumcised, thou and thy seed after thee. All right, so this is what's going on. And we see at this time that, um, you know, we see at this time what's going on between these people, uh, Chittim and Tubal. So we go to uh, Genesis chapter seven, chapter 17, okay? All right. Oh, well, hold on. Let's keep reading uh, in Jasher. At eight days old... Well, yeah, I'll just stop right there. All right. And when Abram was 99 years old, okay, 99 years old, like what it says in, uh, you know, Jasher 17, 16, Yah appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty, the, the Most High. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and the most high talked with him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but uh, sorry about that. But thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, and their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be an almighty unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be there almighty. And the almighty said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee, Every man child among you shall be circumcised. All right. 
You see that in Jasher 17, 18. I'm going to read. Jasher 17, 18 says, At eight days old shall it be circumcised, and this covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And let's keep reading Jasher 17, 19. And now, therefore, thy name shall no more be called Abram, but Abraham, and thy wife shall no more be called Sarai, but Sarah. For I will bless you both, and I will multiply your seed after you, that you shall become a great nation, and kings shall come forth from you. So that is uh, in the Jasher chapter 17. Let's go back to Genesis uh, chapter 17, verse uh, 11. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. So if you want to be, so if you want to be part of, uh, uh, if you want to be part of this lineage, you have to be circumcised. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs to be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. So, you know, one thing to qualify to be able to see the Abraham, you got to be circumcised. Okay. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, thou shalt be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. So you got to be circumcised, man. So, you know, so any Hebrew out there that is born has to be circumcised. If you want to be part, you know, physically you can be part of the, you know, the seed, but, you know, spiritually you have to, you know, you can be circumcised physically and you also have to be circumcised spiritually. When you're, circ when you're circumcised spiritually, that means you cut off all the uh, influences of the world, you know, and you go directly toward the law, statutes and commandments that the Most High has given. And the Most High said unto Abram, as for thy, for Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall her name be, as it says in Jasher um, uh, 17, 19. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. How about that? Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. So. Now, then Abram fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old and shall Sarah that is 99, that is 90 years old bear. So he's laughing in his heart and Abram said unto the most high, oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And the most high said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. So don't get me wrong, Ishmaelites, you are of you are from the seed of Abraham, okay? But the covenant, you know, there are many nations that, that come through Abraham, but the covenant is going to come through the seed of Sarah, which come, go, come through the seed of Isaac, and then anything that comes down to Isaac, the Jacob's sons, everything like that, okay? I mean, Isaac's sons, is that's that's the covenant is with these certain people. Now, the, now as far as the blessings through the seed, through the Abraham, you'll have it, but there is a certain covenant that will be made to a certain sect of people that comes through the... Uh, through the copulation of uh, Abraham and Sarah, okay? And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. And he has, there's Arabs all over the world, man. 12 princes shall he, shall he beget and I will make him a great nation. And they have become a great nation. Look at Saudi Arabia, you look at, all these oil rich countries, man, they've been blessed. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah, his lawfully wedded wife, 
shall bear unto thee at this time in the next year. Because him and Sarah been through so much, man. They went to Egypt together. He vexed uh, the most high smote the Egyptians because one of them would try to touch Sarah. The Pharaoh tried to touch, touch Sarah. So in the most high eyes, Sarah was Abraham's wife. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. So the most high already know what's going to happen, man. And he left off talking with him and, and the most high went up from Abraham and Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house and all that were brought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, Abraham's house and un and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the self same day as the Most High had said unto him. And Abraham was 90 years old and nine. So he was 99 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. That was the covenant made, you know, so <laughs> probably one of these little blunt instruments and went scraping away at the skin, man. Ouch. And Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And the selfsame day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael, his son, and all the men of his house born in the house and bought with money of the stranger were circumcised with him. So if you're going to be part of Abraham, if you want to be, you know, part of him and blessed, you had to get circumcised, you know, even if you was a stranger. So we continue in Jasher. I left off with uh I left off with uh uh chapter seventeen verse twenty. Now we go to chapter eighteen. And Abraham rose and did all that the most high had ordered him, and he took the men of his household and those brought with his money, and he circumcised them as Yah had commanded him. And there was not one left whom he did not circumcise, and Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised in the flesh of their foreskin. 13 years old was Ishmael when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, which says that in Genesis 17, 25. And in the third day, Abraham went out of his tent and sat at the door to enjoy the heat of the sun during the pain of his flesh. So he just got circumcised and, you know, his penis is hurting and everything is pain. And Yah appeared to him in the plain of Mamre. And that's uh, we'll stop right there. And that'll be it. Now, um, you know, getting back to this, to, you know, to the part when I was talking about uh, Chittam and uh, Two Ball, and I was like saying like Chittam, uh, I think Two Two Ball was like modern day Armenia or something like that. So, uh, Google. Dot com, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm just going to. Uh, Google right now uh, and looking up Chittam and Tubal. A lot of people think Tubal is Russia. You know, Chief Prince of Meshach and Tubal, you know. Uh, let's see. Chittam is also called Kittam. Let's see what this has to say. I just want to make sure that I got it right, man. Yeah, it's the people of Jafet. All right, so I'm right. It's a, it, you know, they had moved into the uh, in, into Asia. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, I don't know, Kittim, Kittim, Kittim. Isles of Kittim, because the Gentiles were the Isles. That's the, you know, Jephetic people. Okay, so yeah, so I'm right. And, uh, you know, Tubal would be Armenia. So these were Asiatic, uh, these were Asiatic, Asiatic black, black Asiatic wars between these, these uh, black Asians who were going at it and uh, they was fighting each other. And while that was going on, man, the promises were being made to... Uh, Abraham through his seed. So we already have seed made. We already had the Japhetic people. We already have the, uh, you know, the, you know, the Hamitic people. Now we have some people from Shem coming through 
Shem, but there is only one people who actually have the covenant, and that's the people that comes through the lineage of uh, the marriage of uh, Abraham and um, Sarah. So there's a, you know, he got Shemitic people, right? Because, uh, you know, Abraham was a Hebrew, so Ishmael comes to the lineage of Shem, so they actually are Shemitic, you know. Yeah, I mean, they actually are Shemitic because their mother, you know, she was Egyptian, so she was actually Hamitic, but her father, Abraham, was Shemitic. So actually, the Ishmaelites would be, uh, you know, Shemitic people, you know, in a way, okay? And Sarah was a Hebrew, obviously, so... Uh, that's where the tr that's where the true lineage comes from us through Abraham and Sarah because they're both uh, Shemitic, you know, and that's where the lineage comes through. And uh, that's about it, man. I hope that explains a little bit. Um, I don't know, man. D dealing with the Bible, man, it's nothing but truth, man. It just lets you know, you know, when an Arab says, you know, I'm from the seed of Abraham too. Yeah, th you you're right. You are from the seed of Abraham. You're right. But you're not the ones that the covenant will go through. You know what I'm saying? You know, no offense to you, but the covenant would come through the lineage of that that uh, relationship of Abraham and Sarah. And Hagar was just to hand, well, his wife too, but she was the handmaid given to him by the uh, Egyptian pharaoh. All right. Love you guys much. I'll holler at you on uh, uh, chapter... Uh, uh, well, in the next chapter, I think it's chapter 18, if I do recall. Uh, yeah, chapter uh, 18, okay? All right, shalom.